oceans sustain life. An abundant ocean can feed a billion people a healthy meal every day forever. But now they are being filled, killed by throwaway plastics. The equivalent of one garbage truck of plastic is dumped in the sea every minute. 17.6 billion pounds every year. Plastic is everywhere in our ocean, floating on the surface, mixing in the salt water, and sitting on the ocean bottom, miles and miles deep. And once in the ocean, it never goes away. Over hundreds of years, it breaks down into small pieces. But those pieces, even the tiny ones called microplastics, are still plastic. Sea turtles are choking on it. Scientists say that over 60% of whale and dolphin species are affected by it. Zooplankton, the base of the ocean food chain, eat it. And so do we. It's in the water we drink. It's in our food. Microplastics have been found in our salt, our honey, and our beer. And sometimes even in the air we breathe. Companies are choosing to make something that will be used just once from a material that lasts forever. Hello, my name is Carlos. Today we will talk about theme that affects all of us, plastic. When starting the theme, I asked myself a question. What kind of profession should a person be in order to be able to talk about plastic recycling? in a scientifically correct and understandable language for the consumers. Do I have to be a chemist? No chemical processes that make plastic bottle? Maybe I have to be sustainability coordinator and support environmental programs to help different organizations achieve sustainability goals? Or maybe I should view myself as a sustainability enthusiast who support programs that focus on improving the environment and help their local communities. What our friend Google would answer to that question? So, what qualifications do I need to work in sustainability? Commitment to the work, the ability to work in a team, communicational skills, computer literacy, environmental experience. We may add that those skills are relevant in almost any profession today in our world. What am I pointing at? I'm a wood design specialist and I can tell you how to recycle wood products or how to be eco-friendly when working with wood. And if you are not interested in it, or you don't have tools or space or something else, just don't do it and you will cause no harm. In the case of plastic, it is a different situation. I may not be a specialist in recycling plastic and of course I don't have specialized systems to recycle plastic, but I can't stop using it. So from the beginning of industrial revolution for almost a hundred of years we are increasingly producing a huge amount of plastic each day finally we as a humanity are starting to understand that catastrophic future that will face us if we won't change something four times more plastic will be produced between now and the middle of the century than has been produced in all of history four times more. What can we do? Recycling? Of all the plastic ever generated as of 2015, only 9% was recycled. Even when it is recycled, plastic degrades. Your plastic soda bottle maybe becomes a shampoo bottle, then a floor mat. Even in the best case, it doesn't recycle. It down cycles. And then it becomes pollution that ruins our beaches and chokes sea animals forever.
Let's take a step back and talk a little about the history of plastics. Plastic is not one single stuff, but a class of polymers. Alexander Parks was the first to produce parkesine or celluloid plastic in 19th century. It was made from a mix of natural and synthetic ing ingredients. Then there came first thermosetting plastic that was followed by polyethylene, then alkyd resins and polypropylene. Majority of plastics were invented between 1935 and 1955. World War II inspired the invention of new plastics, used in everything from military vehicles to parachutes. Plastic lasted a long time and plastic was perfect. It allowed us to make materials that are cheap, useful and easy to replace with one big catch. It doesn't biodegrade. It means it can be easy to throw away, but it's very hard to get rid of. A plastic bottle in a landfill will take 450 years to break down. We make unbelievable amount of plastic, but doesn't it just get recycled? What are all those bins for? Globally, we are only recycling just 15% of plastic we are using. All other plastic ends up in landfills and it will stay there for hundreds of years. There is also the question about what will we do with that plastic that we can collect, because this plastic that we can take from water is so contaminated that we can't recycle it. And remember, the lot of plastic that we can recycle just becomes more of single-use plastic that will go to landfill tomorrow. Here's eight things we can start doing today to reduce the amount of plastic in the future. Reduce how much plastic we make and use by getting rid of unnecessary plastic stuff, not over packaging things in too much plastic and offering more reusable and refillable options. Substitute plastic with paper and compostables wherever we can, particularly when it comes to food packaging and flexible plastics like bags. Design more products to be recyclable. Because not every type of plastic is equally recyclable, we need to make more stuff out of the types that we can process into new stuff. This would also make recycling cheaper and more economical. Today, almost a quarter of the world's plastic waste isn't even collected. So we need to scale up waste collection, especially in lower income countries, which means giving 4 billion people access to waste management by 2040. Today, only 20% of plastic even enters the recycling pipeline, and only 15% actually gets recycled. So we have to expand recycling capacity by double. And we have to make recycling cheaper and more profitable than putting stuff in landfills. We also need to use chemistry to figure out how to convert one plastic type into another plastic type, or even convert plastic into other useful hydrocarbons like fuel. Of course, we will never be able to recycle everything. So we also need to build places to safely dispose of the rest where it can't escape into the environment. Finally, we need to reduce the amount of waste that we export to lower income countries where it can more easily leak into the ocean. By changing our individual attitude towards this kind of pollution, we can make the world cleaner. What do I mean by our individual attitude? We need to move from general agreement that polluting nature is bad to going deeper and taking some action. Just ask yourself about the cup you hold in your hands or the bag in which you put the bananas in the store. Where did it come from and where will it go afterwards? No one will explain it better than a nice professor from Slovenia, Slavoj Žižek. Starbucks coffee. I'm regularly drinking it, I must admit it. But are we aware that when we buy a cappuccino from Starbucks, we also buy quite a lot of ideology? Which ideology? You know, when you enter a Starbucks store, it's usually always displaced in some posters there, their message, which is, yes, our cappuccino is more expensive than others, but 
And then comes the story. We give 1% of all our income to some Guatemala children to keep them healthy, for the water supply for some Sahara farmers, uh, or to, to save the forests, to enable organic growing on coffee, whatever, whatever. Now, I admire the ingenuosity of this solution. In the old days of pure, simple consumerism, you bought a product and then you felt bad. My God, I'm just a consumerist uh, uh, while people are starving in Africa. So the idea was you had to do something to counteract your pure destructive consumerism. For example, I don't know, you contribute to charity and so on. What Starbucks enables you is to be a consumerist and be a consumerist without any bad conscience because the price for the countermeasure, for fighting consumerism, is already included into the price of a commodity. Like, you pay a little bit more, and you are not just a consumerist, but you do also your duty towards environment, uh, the poor, starving uh, people in Africa, and so on and so on. It's, I think, the ultimate form of consumerism. I'm pointing at us. We have to be more engaged in understanding the plastic waste problem and deal with it in everyday life. Global organizations that work to make ecosystem cleaner are doing great work, but they need our support as well, as well as our politicians. The more people understand the problem, the more pressure there will be on governments to make the right decisions in the long term the more correct course we will take and the cleaner the future for our children will be. Let's finish our topic with an insight into dynamics of perception of plastic from the moment of its appearance until today. As I said in the beginning, the first man-made plastic was made by Alexander Parks. It was demonstrated in the 1862 Great International Exhibition in London as a major breakthrough. The most recent exhibition of plastic came up in Stockholm, Sweden in 1923. It shows that problems of sustainability are at the forefront of the designers' minds and should become increasing tendency for us as well. We've never talked as much about climate as we do now. At the same time, reality is what it is. We are nowhere near achieving what we need to achieve. So like on the one hand, like hope, there is hope. On the other hand, there is despair. Like we need to wake up and this is not something we need to do in the distant future. It's something we have to act on now. We cannot resolve this issue just by ourselves. It's a global problem. So talk about it with your friends and family your voice matters and your choice can make a difference here. If you can choose something that isn't made out of plastic or at least of plastic that will be reused, do it and we will make our world better.